You are now listening to the Fitness Education Online Podcast, the podcast where fitness professionals go to grow their fitness business. If you're in the fitness industry, you'll find tips and strategies from proven business experts. Now, let's start the show. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the Fitness Education Online Podcast. I am super excited because we've got a very special guest on the line this week, a fellow podcaster herself. I recommend everyone go out and, and check out her podcast. I'll put the link down in the show notes, but it's simply Fit Studio, online marketing for fitness entrepreneurs. Uh, she's coming to us from Dubai. I don't think I've podcasted with someone from Dubai before, and I think she's actually even Polish. I don't think I've ever met a Polish person before, so it, <laughs> it could be a cool episode. A little bit about this person. She's a coffee and rosé wine lover and a dog mama. She's a digital marketing specialist with 12 years experience. She's worked with large tech and fitness companies in, in London and in the UAE. Uh, for the past nine years, she's owned, she's owned her own dance fitness business in the UK and toured over Europe. She's also the, the co-founder of Dance Body DXB, which is what we're going to talk about today because in March 2020, she launched her first online fitness program and actually got over 500 registrants all over She'll tell us about it, I think, all over the, the world, but definitely all over Europe um, for her first program. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, she also, she helps aspiring fitness entrepreneurs create and launch their online fitness business without the overwhelm, tech dilemma, or confusion. So if you're interested in launching your fitness business, I definitely recommend to reach out to her. But anyway, without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Ms. Eva Golan. Eva, how are you? I'm really good. Thank you for this great, beautiful introduction. <laughs> no, well, there's so much to say there, you know. I'm like, well, should I say this? Should I say this? I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to say all of it. Uh, and there's half the podcast gone, right? Just introducing Eva's skill set. Um, but hey, Eva, I'd love to get into your launch. But just before we do, I like to start all my podcasts off with a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up. Have you got one for us? I do have one. Uh, however, it's actually, I wouldn't say as a mantra, it's more like it's my why, mm. right? It's my why. And it, it became my personal mantra because I look at it every single day and it's like, why am I doing all of these things that I'm doing? Why am I juggling so many projects? Right. So I kind of, I, I wrote my why and I can share that with you. I would love <laughs> to hear it. So my, my mantra, what keeps me going is that I help fit, fit entrepreneurs become their own bosses mm. in the online business space to help them explore their full potential, become successful, abundant, and help them help more people. Woo, love it. If you resonate with that, why go and check out Eva's podcast there. Um, Eva, I'm going to hand it over to you here. So what I know is you, you were doing a lot of dance teaching face-to-face. You were then, even before COVID, if I'm right, it wasn't like, oh, COVID hit, let's go online. I think there was, you, you just planned, it was, it was in the works anyway. And it was one of those things where it's like, hey, I was going to do this anyway. And now COVID hit. So, so here it is here. And I believe you got 500 people registered. And I think it's going to be a lot of people listening to this being like, man, I'm, I'd be lucky to get five people registered for my, my online fitness program. How the crap did she get 500? So I'm going to hand it over to you here and start wherever you want to start, where you think the... You know, the, the listeners would like to hear from. And just if you could let us know for the next sort of 20, 25 minutes, how did you get 500 people registered for your first ever online program? So um, it's funny because uh, uh, we, the, the, the crew, the Dance Body DXP instructors, we wanted to go online way before COVID hit. So we recorded our content. We went to the studio, we hired a studio, we recorded all of our content in November I think it was November December and you know the plan was to go online regardless of COVID or not but you know it does take a bit of time to edit dance videos specifically so I think we had like 12 or 14 videos to, to edit and and uh, we were going to launch in a you know in a in like a proper way uh, but then when COVID hit in March we're like oh crap like we have to we have to do it now right everyone's asking us for for online content so um so we did we launched it in you know, at the very beginning right you know march april where, where everyone was in lockdown and 
I think what was what made us successful was that we already had an audience to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had our Instagram following and then we had students who normally come to our physical classes and then they were not able to do them anymore. So they, they, they opted in to do the, the, the online workouts, right? So it's not always the case, right? It's not always going to be this way for everybody. It's not like, you know, but we took, took the sort of like the, the advantage of this situation and we just launched at the, at the very, very, very right time where, where people was just to totally deprived of, of working out and dancing. And, you know, dance is something that make, makes people feel so, so good. Um, and they were really just striving to, to do that. And that's how, we, that's how we got our numbers. But I would say the, 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 the one of the things that I also recommend is to make sure that you, before you launch, you really have an audience to go to, mm-hmm. right? So that's one of the key things that you have to have. So if you want to have a successful online business, you need to have an audience first. You can't just create your course and then try to tell people, oh, hey, here's my course, go come and buy it, right? It doesn't work like that. You need to, you need to have an audience. And we, you know, we've been, um, set, we've been um, at that point uh, set, set up for three years, Dance Body GSB. So, um, you know, we had a good following and, and really engaged audience. Um, on Instagram and that's how we kind of nurture them and what we also did was we offered some free workouts as well so we uh, use that as our lead magnet as our opt-in right as our freebie for people to join our email list um, and then once they joined our email list from our freebie we, we then targeted them and and um, you know asked them to to join our paid program um, through the the email sequence um, after that as well. Love it. Okay, let's break a, a few of these down. So even before we go into that, let us know a little bit, I guess, about your program because it wasn't live Zoom calls, right? It was pre-recorded on-demand content. Can you tell us a little bit about, I guess, w- what's in that? You know, what, what's the person actually buying? What do they get? Can you tell us a little bit about that. So um, at Dance Buddy, we are what what makes us unique and what, what, where we stand out is the variety of dance workouts that we offer. So we've got Afro vibes, we've got hip hop, uh, we offer Latin, and now heels and a lot a lot more styles. So that's the kind of like the USB. So it's not just one type of workout. You actually get a variety, and that's one of the things that our audience really likes, so that they don't get bored. Another aspect of it is also that it's very easy to follow. Mm-hmm. So we're not, our audience, target audience is not professionals. Um, our target audience is someone who really wants to have a good time working out, dancing, um, without needing to be a pro. So we keep it nice and simple. And that's something that resonates really well with our audience. So what we did was we went to the studio and... And it was, it was three of us. At, uh, it was Benny, my partner, Nalita and me. And, um, and each of us did like, I think, five videos each, um, which is pretty, it's, it, we did it over two days. Um, and I have to say, it's, it's pretty exhausting towards the end of the day. But when you know, when you love what you do, you just don't care. You just you give it 150%. And, you know, the reason why we decided to, to do on demand is because it is, evergreen content like it's something that we can reuse later on later on we don't have to be physically present every single time when we're delivering it right although I do recommend having a a mix of both so a mix of on-demand content and live content because engagement from the live content tends to be higher than on-demand because because people want to have that connection with you live Right. So I do recommend to to anyone who's listening and if you're planning to do your own program, then think about doing, you know, maybe a mix of both. Um, But I do recommend doing some on demand content because it is evergreen. It's always going to be there and, you know, you can reuse it later on in your other programs. Right. So, for example, if we one day decide to do a specific program with just Afro, we can you reuse that content just for a specific Afro course or hip-hop course, or a Latin course, right? So at the moment, we've bundled everything together. 
but then maybe one day when we have enough content we could be like oh actually you can do 30 days of afro if you if that's what you really like because people have got their preference and after after a while right mm. but that's the point like you can you can reuse that content later on so that's why we went to the studio we hired a studio um and um and we just danced we really we, that's what we love we love we love to we love to do it and you know i'm, I'm blessed to have a really good team really professional, hardworking team um, who just like me, we love what we do. And, and we just, we, yeah, we smashed that. We smashed those two days. <laughs> so, so I can get my head around this. What does the participant get? Is it like 20, is, uh, do you get one, you know, salsa work, one salsa dance, one hip hop dance, one, you know, um, Afro dance, or what, what is it they get in the, the course? Or the program. So what they get, so when they sign up, um, they get a, a also like a bonus workout with a warm up, a hip hop workout that they can, and the warm up in that workout they can do, um, with any other workout that follows after that. So they get the warm up, and they get three classes per week, and so one of them is Afro, one of them is hip hop, and one of them is Latin. So you get three different classes per week for four weeks. So it's 12 classes plus a bonus class, so like 13 classes uh, in a space of a month. So um, the classes are normally about 20 to 30 minutes long. Um, and that's the thing, you get, you get that variety and you don't feel overwhelmed because you don't have to do them every single day. Um, but at the same time, you actually get a really good workout um, three times a week. Love it. And then delivery. Is it, did you just email them over the workouts? Do they log on to a platform, a, a Facebook group? How does that part of it work? Yes. Yeah, so we, for that particular course, we used Thinkific, which yeah. is an online platform, uh, which you're familiar with. <laughs> um, so it was all, I, I, I like to do things properly and I do mm. believe in, in delivering content in a way that will work well on the desktop, on the TV if they want to connect it or on the mobile. And um, I personally love using Thinkific and Kajabi for, for my content. Um, and yes, it was it's all secure with a login so that we can also keep our database secure um, and see their progress, right? So the, the benefits of that is that if you decide to go this way, for example, this, this route, you can, you can see the progress that your, your client customers are making, right? So you can see how much they've completed. Um, who hasn't and in that case if someone hasn't completed you can send them a reminder right or you can engage with them and be like hey like why didn't you complete what's up like you know maybe life got in the way right which normally does um but you know it gives you these capabilities that is great because then you have you can have data and you can actually be you can make like the data driven decisions um so that's why i'm a big fan of those platforms um for pre-recorded content specifically Yes, love it. Okay, cool. So that part makes sense. So the 500 people that went in, do you know the split of like how many were your face-to-face -face clients? How many would just followed you on, on Instagram? Do you know that data? So ten, about 10% 10 of them were our face-to-face -face clients. And then the, the majority, the 90% were not our face-to-face -face clients. They were either based in the UAE um, or majority of them were in Europe. Um, and and also like that that's word of mouth so our face-to-face -face clients obviously they were super highly engaged ones right because they know us in person they've been coming to our classes for such a long time so they were the ones kind of spreading the word around as well and and the, the amount of times you know we got tagged on the stories and and then the stories on instagram for example were also act, acted acted as a word of mouth from those students because they were they were tagging us so much they're so proud of, you know, when they learn those moves and they want to show on, on, on Instagram Live, that kind of acted as a, as, a, as a marketing tool that we didn't have to do anything, right? It just worked itself. What was, can I ask what your Instagram following was before you, just before you launched? Um, it was about 3,000, I'd say, to 2,500. Okay, so that's still pretty freaking good, right? Because you, that means one in five, is that one? one in five of your instagram followers signed up for the program yes plus we also had our database at that point so we had our email following our instagram following and our and our email database as well so our email database to be honest wasn't that huge it was about a thousand people 
mm. uh, but combined all together uh, and brought all these results. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So let's say, for example, so you had a decent following there, right? You know, two and a half, three thousand, whatever it may be. What's your advice if someone's listening to this and they don't have that much of a following? Do they, is your advice, well, hey, first thing you got to do is build that following up. What, what would you say there? I would say find out what stage your customer is at, right? So, for example, do they know that they have a problem? Right? Do, do, do they know that you have a solution that solves their problem? Right? Are they aware of that? Or maybe they are, maybe they're not, right? So find out what stage they're at and, and put out such content on your social media that would bring that would catch their attention and that would speak to them and then build your audience in the first place. I do believe that email marketing is still key. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as like as much as much as we're 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 lucky and we're great, it's great for us that we had a big following on Instagram. I do still believe that your email list will bring you better leads, uh, better quality leads. So nurture them through your email marketing, whether you have a YouTube channel or Insta, whichever social media platform you're on. Make sure that you're visible on at least one. You don't have to be on all of them, but at least one, and nurture your clients through through your e through through email. And, and put out such content that will really relate to them. And then that way they stay on your database and you will, you will you know, for example, offer a freebie as well, you know, a lead magnet, something that they can get from you for free. Um, so that then they enter the funnel into the, you know, uh, know, like, and trust, right? So when they know you, at some point they will like you and then at some point they will trust you and at that point they will buy from you, right? It takes time. It's not immediate. But I would say focus on, on growing your email database um, through your freebie, your opt-in. Put out content relating to your opt-in if you want to run ads um, on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Then if you've got the budget for it, then great. Do that. Do it mindfully <laughs> with someone, for example, that you know how to do because sometimes... I personally got really burned on Facebook ads uh, in my last launch, I have to admit, and we can talk about that as well. Um, so yeah, just do it in a way that it's really not costing you a lot, um, but it does help you grow your list quicker. Just make sure that you really know your audience well, that you select it well on, on, on Facebook ads and make sure that these, these are the kind of people that you really want to reach out to and, and um, get them onto your email database. And once you feel like you've got enough people, then go on and, and launch a product. I wouldn't go just, you know, launch a product with a hundred people on your list. You could, you know, depending on what numbers you want to get. Um, but I would say just nurture them for, for a bit longer and get to a higher, a higher number and then launch a product so that you don't end up doing all of this hard work and then you know you only get three people, for example, which is still fine, right? We still learn, we still grow, we still we can still do that, but it depends on like on your on your on your um, the numbers that you want to achieve from your launch. Yes, love that. Okay, so so many good points there. I'll summarize what what I sort of heard. Step number one, I guess, is pick one social media platform. All right, don't go on all of them. Let's pick one social media platform. Let's think of our ideal client. What point are they at there? Great. On that one social media platform, let's put out content and let's focus on growing that, um, that platform there using this content here of this ideal people. But that's just the first stage of it. Just having social media following is great, but that's step one. From there, it's like, cool. Now I've got this social media following. How can I convert these followers into leads on my email list? That's sort of step number two. And then step number three is, okay, cool. Once I've got an engaged email list and I've got enough people in there, cool. Now I'm going to launch my, uh, my online program there. Would that be it in a nutshell? Yes. And it can also work the other way around. So you might choose to just use your email list as that um, audience building tool. And then on the back of them signing up to your email uh, list, they'll follow you because they will want to see, you know, mm -hmm. are you, are you um, active? Are you like, can I, do I like you? Do I like your style? Do I like what you put out, the content that you put out, right? So it can work 
both ways. So you're going to start with an email list and then ask them to follow you on Instagram, stay connected, or, you know, grow your, grow your social media first. Love it. And I, there's two points that I like with that more around the same point, which is the, the time side of things, which is like, all right, cool. Don't think that, all right, you want to launch your program on Monday. What are you going to do today on Thursday? It's not really going to work like that. You know, it's like, all right, cool. Uh, you want to launch your program on Monday. What have you been doing for the last three months? Right. Ideally building that list. So you've got people in there, but also nurturing that list because there's a difference between the person that started following you. You might have a thousand people on your list, but if they all started following you last week, that's different to a thousand people that have been following you for, for three months. So I think both of those yeah. are important. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm curious about this Facebook ads. I wasn't going to, it wasn't on the, the, the agenda, but I'm just curious because like, I'm a huge fan of Facebook ads myself. I use it for, um, for my business. And I, it's, it's also one thing that I help trainers with in their local business as well. So I'm a huge fan for, for many reasons, but I'm just curious to hear your experience. So I was running Facebook ads to my lead magnet um, and I was very content with that. I think I was getting like 15, 20 leads a day. They were costing Ooh. me $3. Yeah, okay. something like that. Yeah. It, was, it was going well. I was like, yeah. okay, this is fantastic. Great. I nailed my audience. Everything's going really well. So then when it came to launching my 10-week uh, program for fitness coach, coaches, which I called Online Business Bootcamp, um, that was that's my signature signature course, right? Where I help. Uh, it's a, it's in the group setting, and I help fitness instructors to actually go through the program in ten weeks' time, so that by the end of the ten weeks, you're ready to start launching your course, right? You learn how to create it all, and what tools to use, and how to nail your niche, and you know how to really make sure that you've got that real problem that you know that you're solving, and how you're solving it, and what's that transformation that you offer, right? in a nutshell. So I was, I was like, great, I've grown my list now through my lead magnet, I'm going to launch the course, I'm ready, and I'm going to spend, I, my budget was $2,000 for, for the ads, and base, I based my, the, the number of people that I wanted to get to, you know, to sign up for my free masterclass, I based that number on the number of people that signed up to my lead magnet, right? So I thought, okay, fine. So if I spend this amount, then I'm probably going to get 800 people onto my masterclass. And then during the masterclass, I'm going to show them that it's possible for them to actually launch their own online business, uh, even if they feel they're not tech savvy enough, if they feel like the market is saturated and all of these mindset blocks that come up for, for, for them, for my audience, right? So I was like, okay, so I'm going to get 800 people. You know how many I got? Ooh, let me see if I can. Two thousand. Wait, two thousand dollar budget? Yeah. Twenty. Thirty. <laughs> yeah, thirty. So I was like, okay, how come? And my mistake was that I didn't know that Facebook recognizes the kind of ad that you're running. So it's recognizing that you're adding a you're running a webinar ad. It's not the same as a lead magnet. Lead magnet is super easy for someone to just, you know, leave their email address and and uh, and 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 download your free e ebook or worksheet or something um, versus a webinar, right? So actually, it's it's time that they need to invest to uh, to join live. So my leads were costing me like eighty dollars a lead. So and you know that wasn't even a given that they would turn up because then we know that attendance levels right tend to be about fifty percent, which was the case. So yeah, I got really burned. So that's why I was like, when I launched my program, I was expecting, I was like, oh, I'm going to get so many people sign up now. And that wasn't the case. You know, I got five people, but I'm still happy. And I'm very focused on making sure that I, I am this, their support and they launched their program. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that it's a huge lesson. So I'm telling this so that you, if someone's listening, try not to make that same mistake and be aware that you know it is a more costly ad so um yeah has anything like that happened to you Let like were you, were you were at the beginning of running Facebook right, yeah, probably right at the beginning so and almost yeah very similar to that actually so right at the beginning when I started running it you know it was like I knew that I wanted to use Facebook ads because I'd just gone through all my organic stuff you know I'm like Anyone that follows me already knows what I do. I need to get in front of more people and I need to do it at a quicker rate than just, you know, 
adding people on LinkedIn or following people on Instagram, you know? So I was like, I want to do ads. And I heard a podcast. I used to listen to um, my favorite podcast was, I can't remember the name now, but it's, um, it was by my, my, a guy who I actually hired to mentor me, AJ Mozart. And there was an Australian guy on the podcast talking about Facebook ads. And that gave me a little bit more trust because AJ is American. And I was like, oh, an Australian guy. There's other people in Australia that do this, you know? Then I found out I actually knew that guy's sister because I was working at a boot camp at the, at the time and in running it in Sydney, but it was a franchise and his sister ran a, a boot camp in Perth. So I was like, oh man, I don't trust this guy. You know, I'm going to sign up straight away. Um, paid $5,000 to, to his Facebook ads program, right? And I can't remember the exact amount of, of dollars I put in, but I think I got like one lead, right? And I put in a lot more than, you know, would have been a, maybe, maybe a, that's a couple hundred maybe, you know? And, yeah. and that lead didn't sign up either. And I was just about, and I'd been burnt before because I hired a mentor before that for $5,000 who basically ran off with my money halfway through. So I was even super, I was, um, that's why I, I only purchased this. And I, I was, I made sure before I signed up, hey, if it doesn't work, what happens, yada, yada, yada. Um, but anyway, he made a little tweak and made it into a lead magnet, right? So it went from, I can't remember we had originally, but we went to a, a Facebook lead ad. And then from there, yeah, I was getting leads for a, a this is five, five years ago, right? Like I was getting a lead for, for a couple bucks, you know, that were signing up. And yeah, yeah so um, I did get burnt originally there, but lucky it was able to turn around pretty quick. And then I've been been running the, the lead ads since and doing well. But I think, yeah, what I take out of that story there is like, you're probably even more sad. You did, you did these ads yourself? So I, I did the course on Facebook ads. I learned, I wanted to make sure that I understand and I know what I'm talking about, but I also used, um, um, uh, you know, a friend of mine is a digital marketeer for one of the biggest companies in, in Dubai. Um, and I was like, okay, could you, could you help me? Right. So I actually, you know, as well paid her for the ad. So that was on top. Um, so she did, you know, she did help me loans, but uh, you know, but I, I don't, I'm not an expert yet. I am learning. And I want to make sure, and I also, this is what I would give advice to anyone. If you do want to run Facebook ads, first of all, just really, just really try to understand and, and make sure that you really know the, 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 how it works before you actually start running this, these ads. And if you're working with someone, work with someone that you, that is really going to be trusted and who knows what they're talking about. Right. And, um, and like, I don't know, I'm, I'm part of these Facebook groups that I really recommend as well. If you have a local Facebook group, Facebook group that you know has people in it who specialize in things like this, join it and and join the conversation because there's a lot of like specialists out there whom we might not otherwise know, right? But the online world is amazing, so you can actually speak to someone who specializes in in your field, like Facebook ads for fitness instructors, right? Or even even more niche if you specialize in lower back pain. Something like this, right? You, you can find people like that who have got experience in your field and then actually they'll be able to help you more rather than just a generic ad manager because some of them, you know, we, we, you were burned. I got burned as well at, at, even before, like two years ago. So again, like it's something that I do recommend running Facebook ads, but really know, really know what you're doing. Really know the, 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 the ins and outs of it before you actually commit to spending any money, right? Yeah, well, I'll piggyback off that in a few different ways. So, because I think Eva brought up some really good points there. Most people listening to this probably won't be at your level in terms of Facebook ads, right? So I think most people watching this will, will jump on Facebook and, you know, boost a post about how to drink more water or something, you know? Like, um, <laughs> that's a whole other discussion, right? But I think step one is if you're listening to this and you've got no experience in Facebook ads, do what Eva did and do a course in it, Right. Even that probably won't be enough, but it, at least it'll get you in the ball game where it's like, okay, I sort of get what's what's going on there. From there, I'd do exactly what Eva said and reach out to someone who's a specialist in Facebook ads, but ideally in your area, that's also got a whole heap of results, ideally from people you know as well, because I've worked with, it's like, I'll tell you now, I think I'd say I know, I'm not a Facebook ad manager, right? But I'd say I know more than nine out of 10 of them. I'd say you could get, you know, uh, 10 different ad managers here. I don't know more just from what I've done on my own business mucking around, you know? So there's a lot of them that, because um, there's no qualifications, you know? All you need to do is, is put it in your bio and you're an internet marketer, you know? So it's, yeah. it's very easy to, to do that. Uh, but then also specialists. 
because someone may be good at running Facebook ads for plumbers. That's completely different for running a yeah. Facebook ad for a fitness professional. So, and then I guess the third point I'd add to that as well is be prepared to blow some money. Because if you haven't run a Facebook ad before and you haven't tested it, and especially, let's say if you're doing it yourself, if you're doing it yourself and you've never run a Facebook ad before, like you've got to test stuff. You're not going to know off the bat what, what, what copy works, what photo works, what headline works, what targeting works. You, know, like, you just won't know. You've got to test it. You can speed, in the, speed the curve up a little bit if you hire someone else to, to run them for you, but then it's still got to be a collaboration. Because if you're hiring someone, especially out of the, the fitness space, they're not going to know your business like they do. And they're not going to have done the test. So there's going to need to be some sort of um, learning thing there. You know, maybe they can get lucky and hit it on the first go, you know, but idea is going to be some learning. The only way you can probably um, skip all that is if you've got someone that's got a specific system. That's So the advantage that I've got is my system is just for boot camp instructors. If you're listening to this, I don't want to take Eva's, you know, thunder here, but just to, to um, uh, speak a little bit, like my system is for boot camp, boot camp people. You're on a fitness boot camp, right? I can run that exact same ad anywhere in the world and people will get leads for about five to ten dollars because it's 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 closed, you know. It's like I can run the exact same ad in Sydney, you can run the exact same ad in Dubai, someone can add the exact same in Melbourne because it's it's closed to, to that local business, you know? So that's, I think, the only circumstance where you can skip that that learning curve there, you know? But don't forget, getting a bit off, off topic here. Um, even that's pretty much all I want. Well, actually, no, there's one more question that I like to always finish up my podcast with, and that's around mentors. I think you mentioned, probably off air, you mentioned a couple of mentors, but I know you're a mentor to plenty of people out there. I'm curious to hear who your biggest mentors have been. If you could answer it in a few different ways, if you could give us a paid mentor, so someone that you've handed over cash to and paid to do their program or their course, an unpaid mentor, so you haven't paid money to them, but you, you follow them on social or watch their YouTube videos or whatever it is, and a book that you recommend every fitness professional should read if they want to grow their fitness business. What can you tell oh, us there? Okay. So a paid mentor, my first one was, um, and the biggest one is Marie Forleo. Mm. And, I, and I did her B school. Yeah. So she has a huge YouTube channel. She gives us so much amazing free content. It's just the most amazing quality. You know, she's kind of like the, the opera on YouTube, I would say, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she and when I first signed up to her, I didn't even know about her B school course, right? I, I, I only got to know of it whilst I ended up being on her email list. Now I start whilst I I started following her closely and then I signed up for it and I think that was the first time where I was like this is so great like I love this program I love I would love to be able to do something like that one day <laughs> which is you know amazing because like four years forward I'm, I'm delivering an online course to my audience right um, so that's a huge mentor and then you know I wanted to specialize more in in online business, uh, e-market, e-learning, and, and online marketing, and that's how I came across uh, Steph Taylor, mm. who is uh, she lives in Australia right now. I think she's originally from New Zealand, so What's she uh, in South Africa. Yes, yeah, she's you know yeah, what? I had her on my other pod. I've got another podcast for course creators, yeah. and I interviewed her on there, and I made the same. Okay. I was like, yeah, I've got an Australian here. She's like, uh, yeah. actually, I don't know. I'm from South Africa. I just live in yeah. Australia. Because her mix, her, her accent is uh, it's tough to say. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love what she's achieved. Her journey is very inspiring to me. You know, it's whoever is also listening, it's, it's it, you, you, you will know, right? The success is not just a straight line upwards, right? There's still a few things. You always sometimes come down a few steps and you go up and then at some point you eventually reach the peak. But it's, it doesn't happen like just a linear straight line right so I really love listening to her podcast and how she's turned from you know not having a profitable business to having a seven say seven seven figure business so very inspiring I did her launch magic which I also recommend to anyone who wants to properly learn how to launch a course right because there's a there's a difference between just creating the content and then properly launching it so I would say definitely Steph and then James Wedmore Mm -hmm. someone who I discovered through Steph 
I'm part at the moment. I'm actually like going through his free content, so I haven't paid anything yet. I think he's releasing his course very soon, and obviously, I'm totally hooked now. So I might end up buying his course too, Business by Design. Um, but I haven't done it yet. So someone is a, he's my mentor at the moment, but I haven't really um, yeah spent any any money with him yet. But he's got an amazing library of free courses as well, which is incredible. Just like really high standard and. Even though he's Amer is he's in, in in America, I still relate to him. Like I feel like the American course creators have got a slightly different way of delivering content um, than uh, the the rest of the world. So, but I do I do relate to him big time. Um, and in terms of the book for uh, any of the fitness instruct instructors, um, it's a book that um, sort of tells you about. Uh, that the the, the art or the art of selling, oh, yeah. right? So it's the art of selling and how selling is all about moving people. So it's not it's you know some people feel a little odd selling something, um, right? Or like you know we don't we don't always feel comfortable selling. So um, I'm gonna try. I'm finding it right now. I'm gonna. Tell yeah, you exactly I just googled it. it. I can't find the name either. <laughs> um i've got it i've got it in my amazon i'm gonna have it here ready for us but it's, it's super interesting because you know some people sometimes we just don't feel super confident um selling and you know and and the author of the book explains how just selling is moving people right from from one particular place to another and how how just natural it should feel to us. Once we know that we're solving a problem, right? Then selling is providing that solution to them, which is great because that's that's solving their problem. So uh, I literally gonna have it here for you. Ah, it's Daniel, um, Daniel Page Pink. To sell is human. That's what it is. Mm, okay. The title is to sell is human. Yeah, it's a very great, it's a great book. Awesome. Okay, well, Eva, that's pretty much all I wanted to get through today. Is there anything I should have asked you but forgot to ask you? Or is there anything you want to finish us up with? Um, I you know, would love to connect with your audience. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, 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 to reach uh, them through your podcast. And if anyone is interested in, in learning more about scaling your business online, then you can follow me on my on my podcast as well and and um just uh, some of i you know i've spoken to so many fitness instructors over the past 12 months and those common themes that tend to come up for many of them and, and they include like things like you know feeling like you're maybe not tech savvy enough to create an online business or you feel like the the, the market is too saturated how you're going to stand out and um, maybe you feel like there's not enough money to be made there but you know, some of these things are just our beliefs and are some, sometimes we feel like we're not good enough. So whoever is listening, if you feel this way, I do want you to think this way. It's just a belief. And then, you know, there's a way in which you can shift your mindset. And um, that's what I, I'm really passionate about helping people is to like shift that mindset and be like, you know, what? you just need to learn the right tools mm -hmm. to, to do, know how to do it. And if you know how to use Instagram or Canva or Google Docs, then you can learn all of these other platforms, right? You just have to have that desire in you to, to help more people, right, online. So because you know that you can reach a lot more people online with, with what you do. So if that's your goal, if, and, and I feel like there's a, that's the main goal for many people in this industry. It's like you, we want to help people, right, feel better, um, whether that's lose weight or just feel fitter or, you know, so it's, it's a massive, massive um, part of, of what fitness instructors do, right? They, they help, they transform people's well-being and, um, through, through working out. So if you're someone who's listening right now and, and this is something that you're relating to, then um, I would love to connect with you uh, online as well. And then, you know, we can take the, the conversation after that with, you know, by listening to my, to my, to my uh, podcast or my, my emails. Listen, you know, if you sign up for my email as well, then you get the tips from me and some of the mistakes that I made that I don't want anyone, <laughs> anyone else to make because, you know, along the line, again, there's plenty of mistakes that we make, but we learn from them, right? And once we learn them, we can share our learnings with others so that they don't make them. 
Yes, agree. And I'll put all of the links for, for either social medias in, in the show notes as well. Um, Eva, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's been a real fun, real pleasure. Thank you for listening. If you liked this show, share it with your friends, subscribe on iTunes and leave us a five-star review. For show notes and free training on how to grow your fitness business, visit www.fitnesseducationonline.com.au.